Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, uh, Syngenta, for organizing for this very important webinar on the challenges farmers are facing regarding thrips in their roses business. And for us to appreciate the pest status of thrips in the flowers industry, it will be necessary for us to go through get to paint a picture of what the flowers by, by extension the roses industry is. Uh, we look at the status of the roses industry in Kenya, the status of thrips in the roses or flowers industry in Kenya, damage analysis, and then after that we look at the challenges the ornamental growers are facing in so far as thrips management is concerned. We start by looking at the question posed by Syngenta. Have growers reached an impasse regarding the management of Western flower thrips? I don't think so. And I believe that by the end of this webinar, we'll have gotten some insights on ways to manage them in the flower business. Next slide, please. And yes, as I've already indicated, we need to appreciate what the flowers or ornamental industry is in Kenya. As of 2019, the total area under flowers in Kenya stood at 4,000 hectares, of which 3,500 hectares falls under roses. And according to the 2019 Kenya Flower Council export statistics, which is obtained from HCD, we exported a total of 126 million kilograms of roses, which translates to 3.5 billion stems or 10.12 million stems every day. And this accounts for 80% of the flowers exported from Kenya. And in this roses industry or flowers industry in Kenya, we have 160,000 direct employees and for every one employee, it's estimated that there are five indirect employees, which translates to 800,000 employees in the flower business. That's how important the flower industry is to the country of Kenya. Next slide, please. And for us to appreciate the trips in the flowers business with special emphasis on roses, Thrips account for 20 to 30 percent of the entire agrochemical bill. Next slide. A bit of statistics: total average agrochemical expenditure on roses varies between 1.2 to 2 US dollars per square meter per year, depending on which part of the country you are operating in, whether you are incorporating IPM or you are on conventional systems of thrips control only, I mean, uh, crop protection. And of these, total expenditure on thrips varies, ranges between 20 to 30% of the chemical bill, and this percentage is increasing. And when we talk of the successful story of IPM in the flower industry, most of the time we are referring to the successful story of phytosilas. And I want to believe that by the end of this webinar, will incorporate, will get insights on biological solutions for thrips management. Next slide, please. As already indicated, there are no advantages in terms of thrips incidences between the low and high altitude uh, rose production regions of Kenya, be it in Nairobi, Naivasha, South Thrift, North Thrift, Mount Kenya region. There's no single region, there's no single farm you can visit and fail to get thrip investigations. So it's a headache to every rose grower in the country. And I want to believe that not only is this a challenge in Kenya, but the international audience will also attest beat Ethiopia, Uganda, South America, Holland. Thrips is an emerging pest. Next, please. And to confirm, 
of the thrip species, the Western flower thrips, Franklinella occidentalis, is the most prevalent in the roses business. It has got six stages, of course, starting with the egg, which is laid on the rose bushes. First and second larval instars found on the rose bushes as well, especially the red shoots, followed by the prepupa and pupa found on the media. If you are doing hydroponics, it could be on pumus or in the soil, if you are on soil cultivation. And then the adult, which is found on the flower. Next slide, please. And therefore, having gotten the above picture, the following is the list of some of the challenges rose growers face in so far as thrips control, thrips management is concerned in the rose industry. The, the first challenge is thrips are polyphagous. Poly means many, phagous means plant feeding, which means they have got alternate hosts. You sort out the thrips, resident thrips in the greenhouse. Some will come in because they are migratory, brought in by wind currents. So we've got a feature cycle. Number second, two challenge is the voracious, which means they are aggressive feeders. When once they attack your rose crop, you can only see damages, especially on the petals. They are a thigmo tactic. Thigmotaxis refers to insect response to touch. Positive if they love the touch, negative if they don't love the touch. Thrips love being touched and therefore they keep on hiding, cryptic lifestyle. And therefore that's why they like hiding within the flower petals where, or greenhouse crevices where they can always be touched by surfaces. They have got a high reproductive potential. One thrip female lays between two to seven eggs, which translates to 150 to 300 eggs in a lifespan of 30 to 45 days. This is further enhanced by the fact that they have got both sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual means they don't want to be mated for them to lay eggs. They are also have a short life cycle, completing a life cycle within seven to 14 days at a temperature of 26 to 29 degrees, which is an environment found in the greenhouse. Another challenge is the Adano feeding habit. Thrips will come from the rose flower buds between 10 and noon, and then hide and then only to come out in the evening between three and five, which poses a challenge that we shall see in a short while. Next slide, please. Another challenge, and we'll be happy to get growers comments on this, is resistance to various pesticides available in the market. Not all products that are available give us positive results once applied. This is because of the phenomenon of resistance. Global warming means the climate change, temperatures are rising, and that helps the thrips complete their life cycle much faster than before. Thrips are also known to be factors of viruses and tospoviruses. If you grow chrysanthemums, thrips are responsible for the spread of the tomato spotted wheel virus. If you grow impatience, impatience mosaic virus, and also in Alstromerias, they are known for spreading Tospo viruses. We don't grow the flowers to consume them locally, we export them. And the markets have got base codes and therefore market restrictions on what to use and what not to use. This poses a challenge to the farmers as to the range of products available for them to control thrips. In international trade, National Plant Protection Organization, SCAFIS for Kenya, KCB for Holland, 
they don't want to see thrips. Some of them are regulated. The Franklinella occidentalis, western flower thrips, is a regulated pest. Others are quarantined, like the thrips palmi, the cucumber thrips. Next slide. All this means that the cost of production, courtesy of one notorious pest, is not remaining the same. It is increasing. Another challenge is the performance of control tools, be it chemical, biological, there are no silver bullets. Another challenge is the MRL, the group Pokemon, which comprises the Swiss Corp, Reve in Germany, Omniflora, and the Penny have given us a residual ceiling of 10 actives at any one given sampling. Diddle was meant to announce in April this year that their ceiling will be six. This will pose a challenge or poses a challenge to the growers as to the number of actives they can use in their production. And then finally, spray technology. We've seen thrips have got a down of feeding habits. And therefore the question is, what time of the day is best to spray against them? Is it the morning? Is it before they come out or after they have come out? Syngenta also took us through on spray water volumes. Do you spray the petals only, the flower buds only? Do you spray the entire bush or the bush plus the shoulders of the beds where the roses are growing? No so type pressure, coverage, name it. I mean, as we talk, the number of actives we're using in production is declining. In the 90s, early 2000, we used to use actives like fipronil, methiocarp, methamyl, oxamyl, which have since been phased out. We've got restrictions on the use of neonicotinoids, acephates, Thiocyclam, lambda, that narrows the range of actives that a farmer can access to produce roses. IPMs, we leave that to our Professor John to tackle. Next slide, please. And therefore, with all those myriads of challenges the rose grower is facing, the question they are asking is Is there a way out of thrips management? The maximum from us all is the way in is the way out. We propose an integrated approach, embracing cultural, fiscal control, biological control, and the use of benign green chemistry in the effective management of thrips to get a clean flower for the export market.